Welcome to section 19 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing Actinomyces israeli, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in a Hollywood set with an actor guy in front of a graveyard scene. This is a reenactment of the famous Shakespeare play Hamlet. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the play, there is a famous scene where Hamlet is contemplating death in a graveyard, so this is a playoff on that story. Anyway, Actor sounds like Actinomyces, so the actor character here should help you remember that this image is all about Actinomyces Israeli. Before we get too far, notice that the background has a lot of purple and blue colors. Just like in our other videos, this is to help you remember that Actinomyces Israeli is a gram-positive organism. Because this is a movie set, it shouldn't be too surprising that there are a bunch of tangled up cords from cameras and other important equipment. The tangled up cords? are a symbol for the branching filamentous morphology of actinomyces because the tangled up cords look similar to the organism when viewed under a microscope. This is a gram stain of actinomyces. The very center of the image is a large colony of actinomyces, which you can see right here. The branching morphology is a bit hard to see because the magnification is so low, but if you look at the pink rim near the periphery of the colony right here, you can see many very fine branches emanating away from the purple blob, and these are the branching filaments of actinomyces. So for example, right here, here, right here, and so forth. So again, actinomyces is a gram-positive branching filamentous organism. Okay, now notice that we've added a scarf that wraps around Hamlet's face and is being used as a mask. Just like in our other videos, the mask is here to help you remember that actinomyces is an anaerobic organism. But why does he have this mask on? Because this scene is taking place in a desert area with a lot of sand that's been kicked up into the air. So he's using the mask to protect himself from breathing in all of these yellow sand granules. The yellow sand granules are here to help you remember that actinomyces produces yellow sulfur granules. It's important to know that sulfur granules appear yellow when examined grossly, especially in the pus from an actinomyces abscess. However, when examined under the microscope with a gram stain, they appear blue or purple. So don't get hung up on this yellow color idea when you're looking at one under a microscope. Let's return to the gram stain image so you can see what it looks like. You can see a sulfur granule in the center of the image right here. The word sulfur is kind of a misnomer because the granules are not composed of sulfur at all. They're actually composed of calcium phosphate and mycelial fragments. In case you don't know, a mycelium is just the vegetative part of bacteria. So in other words, a sulfur granule is just a large colony of actinomyces fragments that have become calcified. Here's another image of a sulfur granule. I'm showing it to you twice so you can see some of the variation in how this may show up on step one. So definitely spend some time familiarizing yourself with these images because they're high yield for step one. Okay, with this in mind, let's continue discussing the image. Notice that there are flowers right next to the tombstone. It's pretty common for people to place flowers on top of tombstones, so hopefully it will be easy to remember that there are several flowers shown in the image. Just like in our other videos, flower sounds like flora, so it's in this image to help you remember that actinomyces is part of the normal oral, reproductive, and GI flora. One of the most important associations to be familiar with for step one is the mouth. In order to help you remember this, we've shown Hamlet holding up a skull with its mouth open. More specifically, the skull with an open mouth should help you remember that actinomyces colonizes the mouth, is found in dental caries, and can cause cervicofacial disease. Okay, now let's bring in the director. You can see that he's sitting in his nice comfy director chair and was enjoying some coffee when he accidentally aspirated some of his drink. If you look closely, you can see that now he's coughing it up and little drops of coffee are starting to fly into the air. We've included this part of the image to help you remember that pulmonary actinomyces can develop following aspiration. So director guy aspirating coffee for pulmonary actinomyces may develop following aspiration. Next, notice that we've shown the director's assistant, who appears to be very overworked. Look at her holding a laptop in one hand, a camera on her other arm, and simultaneously talking on the phone. I think she deserves a raise. Anyway, all the devices she's holding should help you remember that actinomyces can cause pelvic inflammatory disease in the setting of an infected intrauterine device. So devices for intrauterine device infection can result in PID. Okay, now let's turn our attention back to Hamlet. Notice that we've added a pouch at his side with some pennies falling to the ground. They kind of blend into the ground, but if you look closely, you can see several of them right here. Just like in our other videos, the pennies are in this image to help you remember that the treatment for actinomyces is penicillin. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 42-year-old female comes to the office due to a chronic, slowly progressive, indurated mass on the left side of her face. Physical examination reveals a non-tender mass near the left aspect of the mandible. An aspiration of the mass is sent for further analysis, and a gram stain is shown below. 
Which of the following is true regarding this patient's condition? A. It should be urgently treated with surgery. B. It is caused by an aerobic organism. C. The causal organism is part of the normal oral flora. Or D. It stains weakly acid fast. Okay, from the question stem, hopefully you notice that this patient has a cervicofacial abscess affecting the mandible. We can deduce this based on the non-tender mass near the left aspect of the mandible. The picture was probably a dead giveaway because I showed this to you earlier, but recall that the image is a gram stain of actinomyces and the center of the image shows a sulfur granule. Therefore, the correct answer is C. The causal organism is part of the normal oral flora. From the image, recall that the flowers right here along with a skull and open mouth right here, should help you remember that actinomyces is part of the normal oral flora and can cause cervicofacial disease. A is wrong because surgery is likely not urgently indicated at this point in your presentation. Remember, the treatment for actinomyces is penicillin. Therefore, a prolonged course of penicillin is indicated, and if this fails or her case becomes more complicated, then surgery may be considered. So A is wrong. B is wrong because actinomyces is an anaerobic organism. D is wrong because actinomyces does not stain weakly acid fast. Nocardia stains weakly acid fast and is also a branching filamentous gram-positive organism, so this can sometimes be used on questions as a red herring. Hopefully you remember this information from the last video. So D is wrong. So again, the correct answer is C. The causal organism is part of the normal oral flora. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about actinomyces.